What's up everybody? I just wanted to run through a quick overview of all the systems on this electric KLR250. Uh, the frame was a 2001 Kawasaki uh, KLR250 Dual Sport. It had 8,000 miles on it and I paid about $450 for the whole bike with the engine and everything because it wasn't running. The guy had uh, broken the clutch cable and it had just been sitting in his garage for uh, about a year. So he let it go pretty cheap. And I kept a lot of stuff intact on the bike just because I, I love this style of bike so much. Uh, the analog speedometer and the odometer still work uh, just fine. And the key switch, the steering lock, and the key and everything works. All the brake lights, the turn signals, the uh, foot brake I kept, uh, the suspension. And the front and the rear is just stock uh, Kawasaki suspension. And I kept the gas tank, which I actually turned into a uh, storage container. I keep the charger in there so I can plug it into the wall whenever I need some power. I also keep the registration and stuff in there because it's uh, titled and street legal. Let's see, what else we got? I'll turn it on real quick. I kept the plastics and I just painted them uh, flat black because I really like that ceramic uh, black look. Uh, let's see, so for the motor, it's a three phase QS motor, a 273-50H. Uh, I had to do the spokes and the rim myself. Those are uh, nine gauge spokes. They're 85 millimeters in length and they're fit on an 18 inch rim that had the holes kind of positioned for that kind of cross pattern because it's a very tight uh, trying to get those spokes in there. Uh, the tire is a 120-80-18 uh, Kinda Dual Sport tire. Got a nice uh, mostly 80% street, 20% trail pattern. It was about the biggest size I could get to still clear it and have a good, you know, about an inch of clearance on the front of the swing arm. You can tell I had to cut down a little bit of the uh, fork there, but I added a lot of support as well. I added a, kept the pin, put a block in there just to wedge the axle in place. And it's got torque arms on both sides that are held with M8 screws. And then on this side. So this motor can handle 14 kilowatts peak and speeds of up to 65 miles per hour without the flux weakening or 75 miles per hour if you're willing to spend a little bit of extra energy and do flux weakening. And that gets you an extra 10 miles per hour. That's probably leave that off most of the time unless I'm like racing or something. So that's approximately 905 RPM the max speed of this motor uh, with this 26 inch diameter tire. That's another reason I went with the bigger tire was to get a faster top speed because that RPM is uh, pretty much static. It doesn't change unless you do flux weakening. Now the battery was a homemade creation. I used uh, the Tesla Panasonic batteries. I had to rip them out of a Tesla module from a Model S. Uh, so this is all together, it's 20 in series and 16 in parallel. And it's 3.2 kilowatt hours of battery capacity. Uh, it's capable of 160 amps peak output at a nominal voltage of 74 volts. And that varies between 60 volts and 84 volts depending on uh, how much capacity is left. 84 volts is full, 60 volts is empty. I have the controller set to cut off at about 64 volts because uh, some of the series will start to drop off before others and they can get dangerously low to the point of damaging them if you don't cut them off before that. Uh, it's got a JVD uh, Bluetooth BMS in there that you can check the voltage of all the series, which is really nice. It tells you which series are high and low. Uh, it 
controls the charging, so I have it to set to cut off at 4.13 volts, and then it balances all the series down to 4.09 volts, so you always have a balanced pack. It takes about six or seven hours to charge it from empty with a five amp charger. I'd like to get a, a more amperage charger, I guess, but uh, for now that was the biggest one I could find. I might have to just make one or I don't know, I've heard people use server power supplies, so that might be a good route. In the whole case, I uh, don't mind the bungee cord. It's made out of a microwave stainless steel and this 10 millimeter foam that I got from Harbor Freight. They were anti-fatigue floor mats. So I cut those up to fit in there and I covered all the metal edges so there wouldn't be any chance of short circuiting. Uh, I do still have to figure out the cooling because just on uh, doing highway speeds for about 20 miles uh, the temperatures got up to almost 50 degrees Celsius so that's something I gotta figure out. I might put some computer fans here on the bottom to blow cool air and blow all the heat out of the top here and eventually I'm gonna cover both of these sides of this panel with plexiglass so you can see. And the controller is back under the seat here. It's kind of hard to see that red light up there and it is a Sab Vuitton 72200 that's 200 amp peak controller it's got 100 amps of regenerative braking which you do with the foot switch here and that pulls the brake light switch which is just connected to the regenerative braking now and it's held in place with a spring to reset it so that works just as well as a disc brake, but it also does not waste any heat. It's much more efficient because it pumps power using the motor basically as a generator, pushes power back into your battery pack. So that gets you an extra five to 10% of range, which is really nice to have that extra efficiency. And it prolongs your brake life as well, your brake pads. I'm gonna get a rear brake caliper. It's coming in the mail in the next couple days, put on that disc brake just to have uh, maximum braking just in case one of them fails. Right now it's just the front brake and the foot brake, regenerative braking. So I'd like to have a third one, a brake lever on the left side to control the rear disc brake. Let's see, the display is the UKC1, it shows you your speed, your power output, uh, trip and odometer and it also has one to five speed settings so each one corresponds to about 15 miles an hour so one is 15, two is 30 miles per hour, three is 45 and then five is up to 75 miles per hour with the flux weakening. I like to leave it on five just because it's nice to have all that power you know just at your fingertips. And so generally, for now, while I'm breaking it in, I've got the controller limited to 100 amps or seven to eight kilowatts. And that's just so I can try it out and see what the temperatures are. I've already found out that the battery, you know, has some cooling issues, so I kind of expected that. Hasn't been anything that's you know, stopped me from going where I need to go yet. Generally, the top speed is 60 to 75 miles per hour. Uh, I think the acceleration, I could probably do 0 to 60. I mean, if you really just ran the throttle full, I think you'd do it in 5 seconds. I haven't tested that yet, but you know, maybe in the next few days I'll try that out. Just got to get to a good stretch of road to do it. Uh, it's got about a 50 mile range between charges, so it's you know great for getting around town, going to friends' houses, commuting to work and all that. And the specs on the motor, I think it says 350 newton meters of torque. So that seems very high. That's like equivalent to a V6 engine. So I don't know how true that is, but it definitely feels like it has enough torque to, you know, pop a wheelie just at any time if you just twist that throttle a little too much. I definitely have to lean forward to keep the weight, uh, to keep it from just wheeling in normal driving, you know, if you're really trying to accelerate. So all around, I think this is a really perfect uh, bike conversion. I love using it to just get around town and uh, save some money, save some gas, cut down on the pollution, and just generally have an awesome time.
experiencing that raw power that you feel, that on-demand torque that you get from those electric motors. It's awesome. It's something I think everyone needs to experience. It's so quiet. It's like a ninja bike. So that's all I got for now. Uh, let me know if you've got any questions about this one. I'd be happy to answer them. I'm very happy with how this turned out, and hopefully it'll give me many years of service. Alright, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.